Hey, Chandler Bolt here, and in this video, I wanna to talk to you about how to create an entrepreneur house or a co-living house. So first things first, what's an entrepreneur house? Well, an entrepreneur house this is something that I created years ago. Um, the very first one that I created was in San Diego, and it was actually written up on entrepreneur.com, and it's basically this mansion uh, where a bunch of entrepreneurs all running online businesses, so six or seven figure businesses, all live in one house. So it's this massive house, we all live there in one house. We had someone who did all of our grocery shopping, we had someone who cooked all of our meals, we had a maid who cleaned the house, we had masterminds every single week where we learned from each other. It's kind of just this business accelerator house where you can be around like-minded people uh, all day, every day, and it just challenges you to grow and it's an environment that really supports your goals. So what I wanna do in this video is break down how to create an entrepreneur house or a co-living house. Because the first things first, and the first thing I wanna share here is the, the entrepreneur house that I just explained, and I'm gonna explain more in this video kind of exactly how you can create that. That's just one version of a co-living house, right? You could create houses around specific goals that you have. You could create houses around specific profession, any way that you wanna grow. There's a lot of different ways that you can create a co-living house with like-minded people. So first things first, and the first thing you need to do, even before I get into the three steps, is you need to figure out what is the purpose of this house. So what's the overarching purpose or drive or reason that you're creating this for yourself or for your community? For me, it was I wanted to be around like-minded people and I wanted to grow my business. Now, and in addition to that, kind of the ancillary purpose that I had was I wanted to surround myself with, you know, the, the Jim Rohn quote that says, you are the average of the five people that you spend the most time with. Uh, well, I wanted to surround myself with five people who were gonna challenge me in different ways. So if you look at kind of your wheel of life, so for me that's my business, that's spiritually, that's health, that's all the you know kind of other things that I care about. I wanted to have someone in the house who was gonna challenge me spiritually. I wanna have someone in the house who was running a way bigger business than me, right? I wanted to have someone in the house who was gonna challenge me to get outside, to eat better, so that I could be rounded out by surrounding myself with people who challenge me in different ways. So first things first, you gotta figure out what's the overarching purpose for you and for this house. And then once you get that figured out, there's three steps to creating the house. So step number one is to pick the people. The people are the most important thing. If you pick the wrong people uh, in your house, then you're not gonna have a great culture, it's not gonna be aligned, and the house is not gonna last very long. So one of the things that I did is created an application. So I had a video where I stated exactly what we want the purpose of the house to be, uh, and I had an application where we were able to get all this information on the people who were applying to be in the house. So we had people apply, we did interviews sometimes, and then we picked the top three, four, or five people for the house up front. So once people apply, once you pick the people that you wanna live with, uh, the most important thing that you do is get deposits before you start looking for a house. I've heard so many horror stories that I actually had this happen to me where people are trying to create this entrepreneur house and you got five people that say, hey, I'm in. And then guess what? When you find a house, you do all the legwork, you do all the searching, all of those things, suddenly they're not in. And there's nothing more frustrating than thinking you have four people and now you have three people, or thinking you have five people and now you have four people. And guess what? All the hard work that you just did to find a great house now goes out the window because you're looking for a totally different house because one person dropped out. So the thing that I did here is I had all people who were involved, I said, hey, this is gonna be a $500 non-refundable deposit and that deposit's gonna go towards your first month's rent. So it's just, you know, we always say where money goes, attention flows, right? So if I've given you money, I'm serious about this, right? So I just wanna know everyone's serious. And we actually had one person back out and he didn't get his deposit back because he calls everyone else a whole lot of extra work. So I think it's very, very fair. And obviously it applies, I'm not getting any of that money, it applies uh, towards the first month's rent. So pick the people and get them to give you a deposit and then move into step two, which is searching for your house. So when it comes to picking the perfect house, uh, I've got kind of a separate video that walks you through decision-making criteria on how to choose if or where you're gonna move, so if you're moving to a new city, but then it also breaks down kind of how to create decision-making criteria for what house you wanna live in. So that video will go in way further depth than I'll be able to go into, the, into this video, so I'd highly recommend that you check that out. Uh, but just kind of some overarching guiding principles. Think square footage, think number of bedrooms, think area of town that you wanna be in. If you wanna be close to the action, do you wanna be away from the action? A lot of times if you're picking a big house, you're not gonna be able to be downtown, right? It's gonna have to be outside of town. So think what matters to you and what matters to your roommates in the house. I prefer to have one person lead the search. So one person's in charge and you're kind of able to 
delegate that out where maybe certain people were searching and coming up with a spreadsheet. Uh, other people were actually viewing the houses and then maybe another person is uh, responsible for signing the lease, all that stuff. But figure out and be clear about what you're doing throughout the process and who's gonna lead which part of the process. Now, once you found your house, this is the fun part. Number three, you've moved in, it's awesome. Now you gotta create the culture. So this is so, so, so important because you've chosen great people, so that helps tremendously with the culture. You've picked a great house. Well, now you need to say, hey, what are the rhythms that we're gonna have on a frequent basis? How do we do what? And kind of it's, it's really a playbook for how you're gonna run your house. Now, I've got another video on how, how systems and playbooks are really important for your business. Well, systems and playbooks are really important actually for your entrepreneur house because it just makes sure that there's nothing that is left for interpretation. Everyone knows how the house is gonna run. Now, just a couple guiding principles here that I like. I like to have whiteboards everywhere in the house. So that's kind of a, a culture thing. It creates brainstorming ideas, stuff like that. I like to have a massive dinner table so we can have dinner parties and always be inviting people over. That's one of the perks of an entrepreneur house is you can always be bringing people over and always be meeting new people. Uh, and then also, uh, I love to have an extra bedroom or a couple air mattresses so that anytime anyone in the house has friends kind of coming through or passing through the city, um, they're able to stay here and not at a hotel. Right, so now all of a sudden you're meeting new people. It's just a fun environment. I know for some people you might hate that, so don't do that if you hate that. <laughs> uh, but for me, I love having people that are able to come through, stay with us, we get to know each other at a deeper level. And it's just, honestly, it's way better than going out to coffee or going to dinner and things like that. Somebody stays at your house, you now have built a much deeper relationship. Uh, and they're also able to kind of see what you've built here, which is really cool. So that, those are kind of some things that we like to do. Now, in addition to that, uh, what we did is we have a Monday night mastermind. So you can obviously do this uh, any night that you choose, but this was from seven to nine every single Monday night. We had goals uh, that were posted on the whiteboard. So we had monthly goals. Everyone in the house had their monthly goals. Uh, we also had just check-ins. So we would have hot seats. So what is, what's your biggest challenge? What are things that you want us to hold you accountable to? Things like that, that we could check in at that mastermind uh, every single week. Uh, and I found that that's really, really important and really, really helpful. Now I've got a separate video on how to create great goals and that, that kind of walk you through this process. But everyone had three top goals um, for the month that they, they're being held accountable to. And then every single week we're checking in on the progress towards those goals. And if they're stuck, masterminding around how we can help them. So that's one of the big things that we did that people love uh, and it was a huge hit. And then every now and then we'd have monthly challenges or guest speakers. So this was a huge hit. We'd have someone talk about systems or we'd have someone co come in and talk about sales. And not only can we invite people from outside, we have people in the house as well. And now it's just mastermind at a whole nother level on a specific topic. So we found that that was really helpful uh, and it just kind of spurred uh, ingenuity and it spurred a lot of learning. Now, last thing that I'll mention here, and this really kind of brought the house to life is we did monthly challenges. So every single month we'd have some sort of challenge. One month we did the whole 30 as a house, which is kind of like this intense version of paleo. So it was a diet based thing one month and this is actually the hardest uh, is we had no work after 6 p.m <laughs> right so people would come in to your room and say step away from the computer and we're going to the beach right so now all of a sudden you've got kind of forced accountability to stop work at a certain time so what i encourage you to think of for your house is hey what are challenges that we want to do maybe on a monthly or maybe on a bi-monthly basis. So there you have it. That's how you create an entrepreneur house or a co-living house. This is a really, really, really powerful concept. You are the average of the five people that you spend the most time with. Uh, this is something that's important. And if you want to create this, I hope that you found this helpful. First things first, before you get started, set the purpose or intention for the house. Then we talked about the three steps to creating the house. So number one, pick the people, be smart about that. Number two, pick the house. And then number three, set the culture. So I'd love to hear from you in the comments. What was your biggest takeaway from this video? Have you created a house like this? How'd you do it differently? Comment below, let me know, and I'll see you in the next video. See ya.